away. It's oh, like really? Soulgate from the hood. So last week, Valve made an announcement saying that they're planning on evolving Steam in 2017. A part of this evolution is known as Steam Direct, a new way for publishers and developers to sell their games on Steam directly, or so Valve claims. This new system has a very concerning fee that could lock most indie developers out from ever having their games published onto Steam. And that's why I'm here today. I want to talk about the pros and cons of Steam Direct and how it affects new developers like me. Let's start with talking about Steam Greenlight. Steam throughout the years went from a heavily curated store to a store more open to developers and publishers with the start of Steam Greenlight. Steam Greenlight, for those of you who don't know, is Valve's current process of allowing anyone to try to publish their game onto Steam. Since Steam is the number one PC gaming store today, having your game on Steam is the best way to get your work out there. Greenlight was a dream come true to a lot of indie developers and small studios. Now they were finally able to have a chance of starting their own game development career. How Steam Greenlight works is developers pay a one-time fee of $100, and then they can submit as many games as they want to be approved by the Steam community. If it is approved, the developer can upload their game onto Steam to be sold and downloaded once they finish their game. If it is denied, they can work on it more and try submitting it again, or they can just move on and submit a new game. And that's great. It's allowed for many amazing games to be released that never would have been put on Steam otherwise. Many of these games wouldn't have become popular at all without being on Steam. So Greenlight was huge for developers. However, there is a problem with Steam Greenlight. The problem is it's too easy for anyone to put their game onto Steam. People have time and time again abused the Greenlight system. From joke submissions to shovelware and asset flips, Greenlight has made Steam feel like it's not the high quality gaming paradise it once was. Shovelware is essentially something that's made in a rush to try to make a quick buck, usually using assets that aren't their own, and usually it's complete and utter garbage. Asset flips are games made primarily with assets that aren't their own and try to make money off of combining these assets. Now, asset flippers usually put in more effort than shovelware games by trying to make a decent game using these assets. But it's usually beginners that do this, and it's usually complete shit as well. And joke submissions are, well, exactly what it sounds like. Chips, my beautiful disciple. Huh. There are really great games that have been published due to Greenlight, but for every one decent game, there are hundreds of shit games and quick money grabs. But this raises other problems for Steam as well. Valve does not want games to be rejected based on personal preference, which was why they stopped curating games themselves in the first place. But they also don't want bad games to be published. Steam is supposed to be a professional gaming platform after all. So the problem then becomes, what constitutes a bad game? Who determines if it is a bad game? Are asset flips acceptable in certain cases? Should we reject all games from beginning developers? If so, how do we determine who is a beginning developer? And what about games that may be perceived as a low effort joke, but are actually attempts by legitimate developers trying to make their start in game development? Potato Thriller, a game I played last year, is a very good example of this. I was planning on doing a Twitch stream of really bad looking games on Steam, and a friend of mine recommended Potato Thriller. They never played the game. They found its Steam page, saw how it looked, told me it was a weird bad game, and told me I should try it. So I did. I bought it and streamed it the very next day, and I was fully expecting a really bad game. To my surprise, it was actually pretty cool. It started off as a parody of the game PT, a small teaser of a new Silent Hills game by Hideo Kojima, but then branches out into its own unique experience and becomes a comedy action game. While there were some mechanics with it I thought were really annoying, it was a pretty fun game overall. It was funny, creative, and you can tell the developer didn't just make this game to make a quick buck, but the visuals of it alone were what scared most Steam users away from trying it. 
They think, oh, this is a joke that got through the green light process. <laughs> green light's bad. This game's bad. I better jog around the park and get back into shape if I want to impress the ladies. Well, I played it, and I enjoyed it. I can't wait for the next game the developer releases. But maybe this is just my personal preference clouding my judgment as to whether or not this is a bad game. Steam Developer Relations Specialist Tom Giardino explained the problem very well. It is really hard to define bad games. The customer who has 25 visual novels in their Steam library is really hoping Steam will get more visual novels, whereas the person who likes other kinds of games are never going to buy visual novels no matter what happens. Those customers just want different things. Valve does not want to define the quality line, and I think that's a very good thing. Something new and groundbreaking called Ass Portal. Uh. We're gonna delve into the colon. So with this in mind, allowing the community to decide games which get approved is also not a good solution. I mean sure, allowing a community to determine if a game is good enough for a Steam release may sound appealing, but the green light process is mostly automated and also only has yes or no as the option for every game. If enough users say yes, the system could automatically approve it. If they get enough no's, but a lot of yeses, Steam might automatically reject it with no explanation as to why. The only other option besides yes and no is ask me later. There's no option for say, I wouldn't buy it myself, but I think it looks like a decent game. And there's no option to say, I don't feel like it's a great game, but it could be if they made a couple changes. Sure, you can comment that, but the automated system won't process those comments when it decides whether to approve or reject the idea. There's very little to no information as to what's going on behind the scenes for Greenlight. I've tried talking to some developers who've used Greenlight in the past, and they themselves have had their games approved and rejected for almost no reason that they can think of. Games that have had very little yes votes but somehow make it through. Games that have had very little no votes but get rejected. We aren't told an exact number of yeses needed for approval, we aren't told what will automatically get rejected, and we don't even get to talk to an actual Valve employee until after approval. And even then it's usually minimal interaction. I remember a couple years back when games like Daisy and Rust were blowing up. I don't remember the name of it, but I was looking through some of the Greenlight games being submitted at the time, and I remember one game being completely shit on. It was a developer's attempt at their own open world survival game, and it was being torn apart in the comments. Comment after comment, they were saying they do not want this game on Steam. You want to know the main reason why? Open world survival games are oversaturated right now. I looked at these comments, and I thought to myself, how in any way does this mean this is a bad game? Sure, some Steam users may be tired of all the open world survival games, but why should that factor into whether or not this particular game is good or not? The oversaturation is the developer's problem to deal with because it will only affect their sales. Oversaturation only really means that your game will have a problem selling well because of the huge flood of similar games. It should have no bearing at all as to whether or not the game is actually released. Am I never allowed to make first person shooter games anymore because Counter-Strike, Call of Duty, Battlefield, and Overwatch already exist and anything more would be deemed taking advantage of a trending genre? Why should my game of the same genre be rejected unless it has some amazing gimmick to it? But then the problem becomes, how do we allow anyone to share their great game idea without also making Steam a laughing stock of a platform? How do we prevent our platform from being overrun by terrible first-time Unity development asset flips and quick money grabs? There are about 13,500 games on Steam as of today. About 4,200 were added in just 2016, meaning about 31% of games on Steam were all released in 2016. Let's, let's think about that for a moment. A third of the games on Steam were released last year. And most of it was shovelware and asset flips. And this is how we get to Valve's newest attempt at addressing these issues. Valve's announcement last week stated Greenlight would be ending and then replaced. The replacement would be Steam Direct, a more direct way to get your games published. As they tend to do, Valve gave us more questions than answers about how the system will work. But here's how we understand how it will be set up so far. With Steam Direct, you fill out paperwork, much like you do if you were to open a, a bank account, and then you're allowed to publish as many games as you want, except for one catch. Instead of a one-time fee to set up a Steam Direct account, you have to pay a fee per game you want to publish. Now this is a huge difference. This fee per game was making a lot of developers, including myself, very concerned about Steam Direct. 
Valve said they had talked with various developers and studios and are currently estimating the fee between $100 to $5,000. That is very, very concerning to small developers. While Valve has solved the problem of personal preference rejecting games by allowing any game submitted to be published, they are also trying to balance this with preventing shovelware and joke submissions, or noise as they call it. Instead of curating games for quality, they have decided to add a paywall. There was an existing paywall with Greenlight, but it was only a one-time paywall of $100. That made Greenlight's paywall ineffective against abuses of the system, but it was also incredibly helpful to new series developers. The money you pay for a per title fee, Valve says, is meant to be recoupable, meaning you will get the fee paid back to you. However, they don't address very important questions with this. When would we get our fee back? Are there cases where Valve will keep our fee? For instance, will we only get our fee back if our game does well? And who decides if we are worthy of having earned our money back, since the whole point of Direct was so Steam doesn't have to curate games? Valve admits there are problems on both ends of the price range spectrum. If they make it $100 per title, it will allow a more affordable price for legit indie developers, but will be ineffective against reducing noise. If they make it $5,000, then it will definitely reduce noise, however it will also stop most indie developers. Most indie devs have never had $5,000 in their entire life. Some have never seen $1,000. So making it a $5,000 fee will make smaller developers add in $5,000 to all their crowdfunding. Meanwhile, Valve will essentially receive a huge $5,000 interest-free loan, which you might not even get back at all. Is finding a more reasonable price within this range the right answer? I don't think so. I think the switch from a one-time fee to a fee per title means no matter how much Valve charges and won't work out the way Valve wants it to. I understand the problem Valve is trying to solve, and I appreciate them for it, but you can't make everyone happy with this. Valve will upset people no matter what price it chooses as its fee, especially since every developer now is used to the one-time fee system. They feel they are being cheated. What happens to existing Greenlight developers? Will they receive their one-time fee back? Will they be granted a free first Steam Direct game? Will there be any benefit at all to applying and paying for Steam Greenlight now? because you still can. Or is anyone with a green light account just shit out of luck when direct drops? What will this mean for games that are already greenlit? Should developers rush to get games greenlit now before the system goes away? If you look on Steam today, you'll see green light is much more flooded than usual because of the news of Steam Direct. They're all scared and want their games approved before they have to face Valve's new paywall. So this announcement has caused even more noise, the exact opposite of what they wanted. Some say they will never be able to afford the per title fee if it is too high and will have to abandon Steam as an option for their game. To respond to this, a publisher known as Raw Fury has stated that it will pay the fee for developers that can't afford it themselves. The CEO of Raw Fury has said it would run on a sort of honor system. They ask for successful games from this to pay the money back so that they may use it for other developers in need. Now, uh, I don't know if Raw Fury wants anything more out of this, or if maybe they really are just looking to help people out. But this could potentially undo the main point of Steam Greenlight and Direct. If Raw Fury and other publishers start offering to pay the fee for certain games, it makes it so that Raw Fury and other publishers must curate the games themselves, which again leaves the games open to being rejected from Steam just because of personal preference of the publishers. However, if they don't curate the games and just give the money to anyone that applies, then we will again have the problem of massive amounts of shovelware games. While it's nice for Raw Fury to offer this kind of assistance, I don't think it will help as much as they think. Itch.io saw Valve's announcement and released their own system called Itch.io Direct. The joke there being Itch.io already was allowing developers to upload and sell as many games as they want for free, which they think makes them better than Steam. It's easy to brag about offering a free service when you're not as well known as Steam. Steam is flooded with shovelware because it's the most well-known PC gaming platform currently. Itch.io probably isn't flooded because few know it exists and shovelware developers realize their real money is in Steam. Steam has to have the paywall because a lot of people use it and are trying to abuse their system. So, Itch.io, I don't, I don't know why you're bragging. So, Raw Fury offered one solution to the problem Steam Direct has, but there are some others that have been tossed around online. Leaving Steam for Itch.io has been talked about. Itch.io does offer a completely free, non-curated way to upload and sell as many games or art of any kind as many times as you want, but it's just not used by nearly as many people as Steam. 
It's nice, and I really hope it does become popular, but right now it seems like it's mostly used for uploading game demos for Kickstarters. One solution discussed was for Steam Direct to allow free access to anyone to upload a game onto Steam, but it will cost extra for it to be discoverable on Steam. This means you have to do all the marketing for the game yourself, while Steam doesn't put any effort to put your game on any of its lists or searches. The problem with this is then there is no point to even upload to Steam without paying for discoverability. You might as well post your game to Itch.io, where you can upload it for free, but no one's really gonna find your game. It also makes Steam Direct a sort of pay to win service. Another solution is to make customers pre-order your game, and if it gets enough pre-orders, then it is released onto Steam. If it doesn't get enough pre-orders, the money is returned to the customers, and your game is not released on Steam. You will have to work on it more, and try it again. The problem with this is it just turns Steam into Kickstarter. That and pre-ordering is notorious for being a bad idea. I personally feel a good solution would be to make it a one-time fee again, like it was with Greenlight, but to increase the cost of the one-time fee. This makes it so that while there is a paywall, it will at least only have to be paid once. The one-time fee would be higher than $100, but definitely lower than $5,000. Perhaps a $500 paywall would be best for that kind of system. It's high enough to scare away most shovelware and joke submissions, but it's not too high that's completely out of reach to serious developers. I know there will still be some that argue $500 is still too high for some indie developers, but since it's a one-time fee instead of a per title, $500 is a very reasonable investment, I'd say. It's not a perfect solution, but it's an alternative to think about. Or perhaps Valve still uses a per title fee, but also leaves a community vote system for games to potentially override having to pay the fee. If the community thinks a game idea is really great, then the developers can publish the game without paying the per title fee. Again, this is also not a perfect solution. Both alternatives could block smaller developers with less money. However, the community fee override alternative gives smaller developers a better chance of publishing, but it could bring back personal preference denying games. Valve has decided to take on very complicated problems, and I appreciate that, but they have to be very careful. I feel like they really should have waited until it was more thoroughly planned before announcing it. As it stands now, developers are really concerned about how this will affect them for many reasons. We aren't given a specific price, just a huge price range. We're told we can get our money back, but not how, when, or if we'll always get our money back. And we don't know what happens to current Steam Greenlight projects or accounts. Steam needs to answer these questions, and soon. Developers need to know how to properly prepare for these changes, not wait around worried if they need to rethink their entire marketing strategy. Also, does this mark the end for free games on Steam? There aren't many decent free games out there, but there are some. I'm one developer who is looking forward to one day releasing a couple short free games on Steam for people to enjoy. But if I potentially have to pay $5,000 for each game, why would I ever upload a game for free? As always, more questions than answers from Valve. It's called Steam Direct, but they're not being direct with us. They didn't even come out and say in their announcement that the main reason for Steam Direct is to stop greenlight abusers. They just called the abusers noise. Very kindly. As if one third of the games on Steam is just a little noise. They want the best for their customers, which is great. But what about the developers which earn Steam more customers and money? Valve, do not fuck this up. What you decide to do with Steam Direct could dictate the future careers of many indie developers and small studios. Please listen to their feedback. And please, for the love of God, don't answer our questions the day before Steam Direct launches. Thank you all for listening. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a lot of work compared to my other videos, but I do want to make more videos like this in the future. The problem is I usually don't know what to talk about. We'll see what happens in the future, but if you like this, please like and subscribe. And if you have questions, opinions, or your own solution to Steam's problem, leave it in the comments. I'll check it out. Also, check out my Twitter, where I shitpost, vent, and laugh at weed. And watch for my Twitch streams, where I play CSGO, click circles to weed music, and hopefully soon, stream game development. Wolfbuck, I know what kind of person you are. Goodbye.